this program looks less stable now in year two from year one. That is a big red flashing alarm sign, right? Because when a coaching staff takes over from another coaching staff in year one, you know, and it's interesting how USC and Oklahoma, you know, where Lincoln Riley was and where Lincoln Riley is now, USC and Oklahoma have basically crisscrossed. That Lincoln Riley got year one right, Brent Venables at Oklahoma didn't. Like Lincoln Riley was able to make these instant changes and also the what he inherited from Clay Helton, Andrew Voorhees, Brett Nealon along the offensive line, the mixture of what Lincoln Riley immediately brought to USC combined with the few really good players, also Tuli Tui Pelotu as well, another inherited player from Clay Helton, the mixture that Lincoln Riley put together in year one, all of that worked, all of it fit together. And in year two, without Tuli, without Voorhees, without Nealon on, on the offensive line, Voorhees and Nealon in particular, also Bobby Haskins, though he was a portal pickup, but he was still really valuable last year. Without some guys who were really dependable on that offensive line last season, USC's offensive line has clearly taken a step back. And so when you get a situation, Tim, and I'll be turning it over to you in a moment for your thoughts and your general reaction to all of this, but when you when in year two, you see slippage and you see regression relative to week one with a coaching staff, like that, that is a real problem. Like if, if USC was at least maintaining a relative standard instead of, you know, improving and raising the bar, which is what we hoped going into the season, if it was at least the same as 2022, you know, that would be okay. That, that would be tolerable because the 2022 team did really well. But you have seen regression. This is getting worse. It's the, 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 this team, instead of raising the bar from 2022, this team is falling short of the bar set by the 2022 team. And, and that is a huge problem for Lincoln Riley and USC. In terms of what I've been writing at Trojans Wire on Tell the Truth Monday, one, Oklahoma fans were right. I mean, at least for this year. They weren't right about 2022, really. But for this season, the things that they were warning us about, Lincoln Riley, this year, they've been correct. That's one thing. The second thing is coaches need to be coaching for their jobs against Utah and then on into November against Washington, Oregon. Co the assistants on this staff should not have uh, guaranteed job security. They need to be entering these next few games realizing, like, I need to earn my place on this staff for 2024 when USC moves into the Big Ten. Uh, we can we can debate whether the coaching staff's biggest failure was just not evaluating players well enough in the offseason in terms of bringing them in through the portal uh, in sizing up what they had on the roster. Or we can say that the main problem is once players got in the program, they're not being developed, you know, teaching technique teaching toughness, that's not measuring up. In reality, it's probably a little bit of both, but it's got to be at least one of the two, either the evaluation of players before they come in or the coaching of the players once they do come in. If, at least one of those two things, if not both, way short of the expected USC standard, and that invites all sorts of questions, but one is certainly that coaches should not feel that they have job security on this staff. He was trying to prove some point, like we haven't heard it ad, ad nauseum, but I'm going to pop it as soon as I can. I don't know why I can't pull it it's up. It's coming with a super chat, so. There we go. So explain why Riley's defenses at OU always sucked and why SC's defenses are no better. We cannot win a natty with these defenses. So here's what I will tell you. Short history. I'm sure, Adam, I've got a good feeling you might know a lot about Oklahoma's defenses. Um I'll be point blank with you. He was saddled with Stoops' brother, Mike Stoops, for a while, and uh, those defenses were wretched. I mean, worse than what you're seeing now. And uh, Riley brought in Grinch, who improved them, but clearly did not get them to a championship level. Um, then after a couple of years with Grinch there, he came to rebuild, you guys, rebuild a defense here at USC. This is a year and a half into a rebuild. I, I, I don't know how to stress this to you people. Anyone that watched the 2021 Trojan defense, anybody, 
that knows anything about football. I remember watching that that um, Oregon State game, looking at it and going, "This is literally the worst defense I've ever seen on a, on the Coliseum in my entire life." And I'm getting up there, guys. So anyone that thought that they were to come in and go a little pixie dust and magic, now all of a sudden we've got a championship defense like they've been building in Georgia for a better part of almost 15 years, right? These things don't just pop up overnight. And I think that la- I, I said it on the post game show, and I might even said in the Colin show, Matt Riley did himself a huge injustice by being so successful in one year. Big part of that was that offensive line that he did inherit, but you give Lincoln Riley a solid. Doesn't have to even be you know a Morris winning line. You know, it just has to be a solid offensive line. And he's going to tear up defenses across the country. What we saw on Saturday was serious deficiencies in our offensive line that were exposed because as the season has gone on, like I just said, the defense was getting better and the and the the flaws. Why do you think they were shuffling those guys around? I mean, I was blind to it. I thought, okay, there's getting some experience, blah, blah, blah. It's because they couldn't figure out who's actually going to protect Caleb. And I'm kind of worried about Caleb's health. I hope those flak jackets are tight, are tight this week because – um, these these youths can hit, and if he gets a free run, if one of these guys gets a free run at Caleb, it may not be pretty. Do not oversimplify things here, you guys. Okay, this is what halfway through the second season they have, and you guys are expecting everything to be fixed. I wish it was. It clearly isn't. I think we all just got a bit hyped up after last season. I think that, that right now we think that we should be going to the playoffs in year two. I mean, everyone needs to slow down a little bit, and. They need if if they if they're obviously deficiencies on defense. I think Grinch has had enough time. I absolutely do. He's got the players. One thing for sure, he may not have the players they have over at Georgia, but he does have better players than they have at Alabama at at, at Arizona. Much better uh, players than they have at Colorado. You know what I mean? So we should be outplaying these teams, and and definitely seems like there's something wrong on the defense. Anyone wants to put the apologist label on me? You're trying too hard. I've been talking about problems with this defense for weeks now. And uh, the one thing you can be safe about is, one, they either correct it or they're going to get another defensive coordinator. They're not going to keep them because they're best friends. That's just, again, it's more ignorant talk. Matt, your thoughts on why the defense still sucks after a whole year and a half that they've been here? Well, I do think there are legitimate questions about strength and conditioning because I do think that USC is a soft team, at least right now. I mean, the defense did show signs of improvement against Notre Dame, but of course, Notre Dame is not going to be the kind of offense that really tests a defense uh, at all levels in all ways. Uh, But overall, USC is a soft program right now. I mean, for most of the past few weeks, it was on the defensive side, but really the past two weeks... The offensive line has not come uh, ready to play. And you know when, when we keep saying, well, this is the game that's going to wake these guys up. And this is the game, uh, you know, upcoming that like, you know, oh, it's a really big spotlight moment. And this is the time when we're going to see players elevate their games. Well, it hasn't happened yet. Not that it can't, like it definitely could. But boy, we got to see against Utah guys playing with pride, playing with passion on both sides of the ball, both sides of the line of scrimmage. And if we don't get that, like that's going to tell us that this coaching staff is not able to turn things around. And that's not something that we, any of us were anticipating that this coaching staff would fail on both sides of the ball, not just one to be able to create, you know, steady improvement, development, from players, this team has gotten steadily worse since the Stanford game. It's been worse. I mean, the, the Colorado first half was kind of the exception, but Arizona State, Arizona, Notre Dame, like that is a definite uh, downward trajectory. Uh, you know, since the third quarter of the Colorado game, this offense has really struggled uh, on, on numerous levels. So here we have Utah, a team that beat USC twice last year, prevented the Trojans from making the college football playoff. It's at the Coliseum. Team is coming off a loss. Like if we don't see every Trojan going all out and and just playing with extreme passion and commitment and toughness, that is going to be a cause for concern. And and maybe USC is able to win because Cam Rising's not playing. But like 
like the win matters most, but what also matters just as much as the win is do we see a tough team, both sides of the ball, 60 minutes, uh, you know, really looking like a team that is willing to spill it all on the field. We have not seen that kind of team this season. I mean, you know, USC played a complete, virtually perfect uh, first half against Stanford, but that's Stanford. Like, we need to see USC play a complete half against a legitimately good football team. And Utah, two-time defending Pac-12 champion, made back-to-back Rose Bowls, Kyle Winningham. Like, that that's a good team. Maybe not a great team, but it's a good team. So let's see, maybe we let's should see move these guys put it all together against a good team. We have to see it. And if it keeps let's, not happening, the only conclusion to make is this coaching staff is out to lunch. So let's let's why maybe we should transition to just talk a little bit about the Utah game. We've spent like an hour talking about how bad USC is. Uh let's uh one more thing here. So I wouldn't say USC had an easy schedule last year. The Pac-12 actually had a very good conference last year as well. I'd say that it was easier than this year, without a doubt, playing on the road at Notre Dame, playing up at Autzen, and playing Washington. I would say it's, it's it was easier. But last year was not an easy schedule. You know, the, the Pac-12 had, what, five, six teams in the top 25? I mean, so we're not playing like it, it wasn't some cupcake schedule USC had last year. I think you're missing the boat on that one completely. Another one here. We got another super chat. I would bet a mortgage on Riley never having a D. I don't know if there's a double entendre. You're getting weird on us, but I will tell you that um, you would bet that really he's at USC. You don't, you think he's going to never get a good defensive coordinator or elite defensive coordinator. I, I would be, I'd be shocked. What do you think, Matt? You think there's a chance? Cause you remember Lincoln Riley doesn't care about defense, right? At least that's what Oklahoma tells us. And now most of the Trojans are going to believe it. Do you think Lincoln Riley is incapable of getting a good defensive coordinator? I mean, it, it, it's up to Lincoln Riley to make the choice, but certainly, like if if he values winning as much as I think he does, and as much as you think he does, he will look for an elite defensive coordinator this coming uh, December. And so, if and if he does that, like that will fix that. I mean, like you, you know, in terms of the Alex Grinch conversation. I mean, it's an old conversation, but we just have to go back to what we've been saying in the offseason, that the time to make a move was in January when Jim Leonard was available. You know, that was the time to make a run at him. But, you know, when Lincoln Riley decided that he wanted to run it back with Alex Grinch, okay, like, fine. Like, it was a reasonable decision. It wasn't the decision that I personally would have made, but, like, it's year two. You you just had a good year one, not a great year one, but a, a very good year one. So keep a guy for your second year at a program and see what he does. Give him, give a, give a man, give a professional a chance to improve uh, a chance to show what he can do once and for all. Like we, we all agreed, you know, whether, whether we wanted Grinch fired after year one or not, regardless of that, just about every USC fan could agree. This was a prove it year for Alex Grinch. And then, you know, during the season or after the season, we would pretty much know whether Grinch deserved to come back for a third year in 2024. So the idea that Lincoln Riley is never going to have a, a defense, well, I mean, that does seem a little bit premature, if only because if he fires Grinch and brings in an elite defensive coordinator, chances are he's going to have a good defense before too long. But like we we do have to wait and see what Lincoln Riley uh, decides to do and 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 really how he handles uh, a lot of different positions on his uh, coaching staff. So we're we're not going to find answers to that until December. And so, you know, we just have to wait and see uh, what Lincoln Riley ultimately does 